Hi, I'm Bart Loser, and I'm the program coordinator for Toastmaster District 55's Continuing Education Program. We present a variety of different educational programs to help people learn the basics of public speaking. Today, we're going to be focusing on speech preparation and delivery. This will be given in four parts. The first part is coping with fear. The next parts we'll be focusing on in different in different. The next area we're going to, the next area that we'll focus on after that will be speech preparation. Then there's a short video on delivery style, followed by the fourth part, virtual delivery skills. Welcome back. I'm Bart Loser, Continuing Education Program Coordinator for District 55. Today we're going to focus on another part of speech preparation and delivery the delivery style, which is part three of four parts. In the first part, we fo focused on coping with fear and anxiety. Secondly, on speech preparation. In this section, we're going to focus mostly on vocal variety and body language as delivery tools to deliver your speech with impact. And then join us for our fourth recording, which will finish up this part of the series, which is on virtual delivery skills. One of the most important things to know about communication is that not only do you want to write a good speech, because the words are important, you also want to think about how you're going to say those words. So your tone and your inflection are very important. Your body language, how you look saying it, how you're dressed, how you use the space. Like here we have a very small space online, but when you're up speaking in front of people live, you usually have more room to work with. So body language is key. As a matter of fact, words account for only 7% of how people interpret your message. Tone and inflection account for about 38%, which is more than a third, but more than half is body language. It's how you look saying it, which is very important. And most of us are clueless as to how we look to other people. If you looked nervous to them, even though you might not have noticed it, if they noticed it, it might be helpful for you to work on because it might make them uncomfortable when you look uncomfortable. So keep in mind, you want to use all your tools to have an impact on your audience, and here are some of the things you want to do to have impact. You want to connect with your words, your tone, and your body language in a way where you come across as warm. You want to make sure you sound clear, look and sound friendly. You want to be audience focused. You want to be aware of them and make sure they're aware of you and focused on you. You always want to pre be professional in how you're speaking and the, whether it's the gestures you use or the words you use, make sure they don't offend other people. You also want to be succinct in a way where you're clear and to the point because people don't like others going on and on and on. They generally stop listening. So you want to be succinct. You also want to be respectful of your audience. Choose topics that they can relate to and choose topics that don't necessarily push their buttons. So I know that some people enjoy the practice of pushing people's buttons, but if that turns your audience off so that they're not perceptive to you, I might ask you, who gets to decide you were respectful to them? And if they see you as disrespectful, they may not listen to your message, or they may take it in a way that was not how you expected them to take it, or intended for them to take it. Dynamic body language is a very important part of your delivery. So some body language tips to think about. The key here is your face. Your face has thousands of muscles. So if you're talking about something that's light or even funny, make sure you're smiling. If you want to look like you're glad to be there, smile. Connect with your audience is one of the most powerful ways to connect with your audience with that smile and make sure to show teeth. You may not like your smile, but it, what it does is it's a universal sign to your audience that you mean well, that you want this to go well, that you want to connect with them in a very positive way. You also use your face to express emotions. So you might think about how you're using your face though, because I tend to sometimes misinterpret what I think I'm delivering to my audience. Such as, if I want to look concerned, I look like this. 
My eyebrows, which are very dark, they go down. That's my concerned look. But what if people think that looks angry? So what I've had to do is instead of doing this to look concerned, I've had to do this to look concerned, push my eyebrows up. And I've had to learn to do that, to make sure that the emotion I feel like I'm expressing gets interpreted by my audience in a way that I intended. But who gets to decide how that's going to be interpreted? So I want to get feedback from my audience on that. You also want to have energy. So learning how to use your voice that creates energy. One way to do that that can put emotion and energy into your voice is push more air out of your vocal cords. I call that the library voice, where when you speak to people and you want to sound excited, this is my normal voice here. Wow, I'm very excited to hear that. You might want to use that library voice. Wow, I'm very excited to hear that. It puts more emotion and excitement. So it puts that energy into your voice. So practice using the library voice. Also, your gestures. When we're online here, it's hard to use gestures, but keep in mind, when you're gonna use gestures, you wanna find appropriate gestures for what you're trying to intend. Like if I talk about, well, the first thing we're gonna do, I use a gesture that indicates this is the first, the second, the third. The, this is what happened in the past. This is what happened in the future. This is what happened in the present. So you can move around. So your posture is important. You want to convey confidence in how you sound and how you look. I often tell people it's more important to look and sound confident than it is to feel confident. But in Toastmasters, you will build that confidence with practice. But you also want to focus on how to look confident, even when you're not feeling that way. You also want to think about how you're going to dress. You want to dress in a way that's professional, that impresses your audience, so typically dress to impress. You want to be the best dressed person in the room if you're going to be up there as the speaker. Another part of dynamic delivery is your vocals. We've been talking quite a bit about body language, but also those vocals play an important part as well. So vivacious vocal variety means you're gonna be changing up your vocals constantly, just like you wanna change up constantly your gestures and your movements and your positioning. So there are four Ps that I use to dynamic vocal variety. The first is power. So power is your volume, how much you're getting your words out to people's ears so that they can hear the sounds in a way that they can figure out what you're saying. You wanna choose a volume that befits the space. So know how big the room is. You don't wanna to talk too loud and you don't wanna to talk too softly. So you wanna find what's the right amount of volume to use. And the deeper you use your vocal cords, the lower you are in your vocal cords, the more vibration there is and your voice travels further. So you could come across as louder when you have a deeper voice. If you have a higher voice, you have to work harder to push the volume out there. And you can throw out your voice. It can cause problems. So you want to think about to, to get more volume out there, work on getting into the lower vocal cords. Now, of course, you want to go up and down with those vocal cords as well. So keep in mind, you want to work with that power. The second piece is pacing. Thinking about how you're using your words, the speed of your speech. I know that when I get nervous, I tend to speak faster. So thinking about slowing down your speech. One way to slow down your speech, if you speak too quickly, is to articulate or enunciate your words more carefully. Now, you don't want to overdo it, but you want to find what's the right amount of pacing. You also want to think about the right pause. It's the key to impact of your speech is to emphasize certain aspects of your speech, either by pausing, you can stretch out a word, these ways to pace your speech, or you can talk really fast when you're excited, and then when you're more relaxed, you want to slow down your pacing. Another aspect of that is pitch, and pitch is where you... Another, as another aspect is passion, and we talked about that a little bit earlier, that energy and enthusiasm in your voice. That's where the smile and the energy in your face is important, but how you say those words with passion, with that library voice, is also important. And then the last piece of the four Ps of dynamic delivery in vocal variety is pitch. 
This is where you are in your vocal cords and you can use your vocal cords like an instrument. So higher in your vocal cords sounds nicer. Lower in your vocal cords sounds more confident and it also sounds just a bit more intrusive or possibly aggressive. So you don't want to sound too aggressive. So one way, if you've got a really deep voice, is you might want to soften it with a smile and using the library voice a bit more and being a little higher in your pitch. But if you want to sound more sure of yourself and more convincing and perhaps more authoritative, go lower in your pitch, such as saying something like, look, I'm not going to say this again. How many of you are thinking, it sounds like you might say it again, but if you get lower in your voice, look, I'm not going to say this again. Notice how that sounds much more confident and a bit more in intimidating. So keep in mind the power, pacing, passion, and pitch of your voice are the keys to vivacious vocal variety. This is part three of four parts of speech preparation and delivery. I'm Bart Loser. Thank you for joining us and join us for the next piece, which okay. Oh wow. <laughs> I forgot I'm, I'm talking and I didn't have my my uh, um vocal piece. <laughs>